Okay, so these are lectures from a course on graph theory taught at Brown University in the spring of 2024. And unfortunately, the first lecture did not record. So um, in order to show you who might be watching the YouTube series and try to follow along with the lectures, um, I'm going to show you what we talked about on that first day. Um, so we started off by trying to motivate graph theory by talking about um, some different problems in real life that, uh, that motivate the construction of graphs. So for example, you might be trying to um, match medical school graduate medical school graduates with residency programs, or you might be trying to match kidney donors with transplant recipients, um, and you could represent this by thinking of the people as vertices and drawing arrows between, um, like directed arrows, indicating um, where a kidney is coming from and where it's going. And another classical one is the Königsberg Bridge problem. So you have a town with a river running through it and it has a few islands and then there's bridges connecting the land masses. And the question that gets asked is uh, whether you can leave home, cross every bridge exactly once and return home. And it turns out that uh, it might be easier to model this map using a graph where for each vertex, so we're gonna make uh, points corresponding to the various land masses and then draw a line between the two points whenever there's a bridge going between them. And the, the key observation is that this is not in fact possible because we need an even number of bridges at every landmass because every time you um, enter a landmass you'll also uh, exit that landmass. And so since um, in this picture you have vertices, or sorry, points with um, an odd number of bridges coming out of them, it won't be possible to cross every bridge exactly once and return home. So this is just, uh, I'm going very quickly because I'm just trying to summarize what we did on that, uh, that first day. So, um, so then we defined a graph. So this is a triple. It's going to consist of a set um, called the vertices, um, another set called the edges, and a relation that associates to every edge two vertices. And so in this picture, x, y, z, and w are the vertices, and these um, blue things are the edges. So here's our vertex set, x, y, z, w, and the edges, one, two, up to eight. And the, the third part, the relation, is described by the picture. And then we just set up some language for talking about graphs. So a loop is an edge whose endpoints are equal. So that's this red thing in the picture. Multiple edges are edges that have the same pair of endpoints. So you might have uh, more than one edge going between a pair of vertices. A simple graph is one that doesn't have either of those features. So it has no loops or multiple edges. And to specify a simple graph, it's sufficient to just tell you what the vertices are and to write the edges as being specified by their endpoints. Um, and then when u and v are endpoints of an edge, we say that they are adjacent or neighbors. Let's see what else. So a graph is finite if the vertex and edge sets are both finite. The null graph is the one with no vertices or edges. The complement of a simple graph is the graph with vertex set, same vertex set, and edges are in there if and only if um, they're not in the original graph. And here's a little example. And it turns out that the complement of a simple graph will also be a simple graph. A click in a graph is a set of pairwise adjacent vertices. So in this picture, we have four vertices and there's an edge going between every pair of them. So that's called a click. And an independent set is sort of the opposite of that. So that's going to be um, pairwise non-adjacent vertices. Okay, and then here's an example where 
we started with a graph G and wrote down its complement G bar, and then we also identified the largest clicks and independent sets in that graph. Uh, if you like, you could pause the video here and um, work out that exercise. Then we gave the definition of an isomorphism from between two simple graphs. So an isomorphism between a simple graph G and a simple graph H is a bijection of the two vertex sets such that an edge is present in the first graph if and only if um, the image of that edge is present in the second graph. And in that case, we would say that G is isomorphic to H. And you write it like this. So here's an example of two graphs that are isomorphic. So a priori, these two pictures look different. The names of the vertices are all different. Um, but we have a function between these two sets um, that uh, preserves the edges. And the notion of isomorphism is an equivalence relation on the set of graphs. And so that means that the set of simple graphs is going to be partitioned into sets called isomorphism classes. So for example, here's a class of graphs that are all isomorphic to one another. And this, so the, yeah, this was meant to represent um, graphs on one vertex that are isomorphic to one another. This is um, the, the isomorphism class consisting of graphs with a single edge and so on. So then you can ask questions like, what are the isomorphism classes of graphs with three vertices? And then we write them down uh, as follows. Okay, so then some more um, vocabulary words related to graphs. So we had some definitions. A path is a simple graph whose vertices can be ordered so that two vertices are adjacent if and only if they're consecutive in the list. So, um, so basically it's exactly what you think it is. So we can just start somewhere um, and move through like this and end somewhere else. And that's a path. And P sub N is the graph which is a path having N vertices. A cycle um, is also exactly what you think it is. So it's a simple graph with an equal number of vertices and edges whose vertices can be placed around a circle so that two vertices are adjacent if and only if they appear consecutively along the circle. So here's um, an example of that. And the cycle with n vertices is denoted by Cn. Um, then another type of graph, a complete graph, is a simple graph whose vertices are all pairwise adjacent. So here we have a picture. We have four vertices and every pair of them is adjacent. So that's called a complete graph. And here's just another depiction of, um, of the complete graph on four vertices. And this thing is denoted K sub N. Then we say a graph is connected if each pair of vertices in G belongs to a path in G. So if I pick out any two vertices, there is a path between them. And otherwise we would say the graph is disconnected. Then we also say a graph is bipartite if the vertex set is the union of two disjoint independent sets. So I can break up the two, um, I can break up the vertex set into two um, sets. These are called partite sets, such that within each partite set, I have no edges. So in other words, all of the edges of the graph are passing between these two sets. Then a complete bipartite graph is a simple bipartite graph such that two vertices are adjacent if and only if they're in different partite sets. And that's, um, so that would look something like this. And then we ended thinking about a question, which is when is the cycle C sub n bipartite? And yeah, so that was everything that was covered in the first lecture. Um, this was very, very quick. This lecture took an hour and 20 minutes. So um, if it went a little bit too fast, uh, feel free to go back through and pause and think about different parts. But I just wanted to show what we did in this first lecture so that the rest of the lectures uh, make sense following this one.